Let's talk about RAW versus JPEG. These are two different file formats that your camera can write your pictures in. If you're not sure how to change the setting in your camera, visit sdp.io slash tutorials, where I have a camera tutorial that will show you how to do it. This is a polarizing issue for some reason, but in my opinion, you should sometimes shoot JPEG and you should sometimes shoot RAW. First, the RAW file format is, is generally proprietary to a camera. RAW files capture every bit of data that your camera's sensor captured. They are big and big files are slow to process. I was processing a bunch of raw files the other day and it took close to 24 hours just to get everything imported into Lightroom. They're going to take up more space on your computer's hard disk, but it also means that your memory cards are going to run out faster. Raw can be expensive in this way. One of the benefits of raw files is that they don't do any irreversible processing. And this is the biggest advantage. If you shoot a JPEG file, your camera puts together the final finished picture that can be shared, but that requires it to throw out a bunch of useful information, highlights the brightest parts of the picture, maybe a, a cloudy sky that looks completely blown out on the, on the camera itself, you'll be able to recover that and show all the details in the clouds. This also means that to a JPEG file, it will apply some amount of sharpening and some amount of noise reduction. And that's generally good. That is usually something you want in the picture, but the camera might do too much of it and you don't have any say about it. You can't ever roll it back. You can always add more sharpening. You can add more noise reduction, but you can't subtract it. So raw files start out at zero and let you dial in exactly the amount you want. They give you that extra control. Raw files also allow you to fix even major exposure errors in post, which means if you overexpose your picture accidentally, if you underexpose your picture, you can fix it. This is the reason I recommend most beginners shoot raw. Whereas when you get more experience, you can actually start shooting JPEG more and more because you don't always need that margin of error in there. Let's go into Lightroom here and we'll take a look at some sample pictures. I have the same picture selected in both DNG and RAW format and I'm synchronizing all my changes across both those. I had these bright lights behind me and I didn't want to blow out those highlights completely. I'm going to make it nice and bright. I don't mind blowing those lights out some, but I want to show the artist's face. So this is the RAW file. You can see it looks pretty good. This is the JPEG file though. And let's just zoom in onto his neck here. You can see here in the shadow areas, everything became really very noisy. You know, look at his hat, look at the neck of the guitar here. Whereas let's switch back to the raw file. You can see there's much less noise here. This is much, much cleaner. I definitely was made a good choice in shooting raw on this particular day. Here's another example. This picture is just straight up overexposed. You can see this is too bright. If you look at the histogram, everything's crammed against the right side here. So let's just drop the exposure. So I can bring down the exposure here right about where it should be. Now, as we switch between the raw file and the JPEG file, well, they both look okay, but let's take a look up here. On the JPEG file, you can see these skies, which should be white, now they're gray. And as we look at the histogram on the JPEG file, you can see the very right edge here, the bright highlights don't reach the right edge. And the JPEG threw away all that information that was carrying the detail of the skies up here. Whereas the raw file, it was hiding extra information just in case I decided I want it in the future. And in fact, you can see I can bring the exposure down about two stops. And that's pretty typical of most cameras. Here's a really high contrast situation. I'm literally shooting into the sun, there's a lot of detail that I was able to recover as I switch to the JPEG file. Again, there's still some detail here, but it's not going to look quite as good. This shot, you can see parts of it are overexposed. Parts of it are wildly underexposed because she's in direct sunlight and just hard shadow. Okay, so this is the raw file and this is the JPEG file with the same processing. Here you see a really extreme example of the differences. Why? Because her face is overexposed in the original photos. Raw files are better when you have to do that heavy processing. JPEG files really should be limited more to experts who feel like they can nail the perfect exposure and these same experts will be able to recognize scenes that have a great deal of dynamic range and choose their exposure carefully. JPEG files are also great for casual photos where you it's nothing serious. And if the picture doesn't turn out perfect, it's not a big deal. If you're shooting serious action where you might need to shoot, you know, as many frames per second as possible continuously and you're shooting a thousand pictures, JPEG is perfect for that because it's going to let your camera go faster. Raw file is generally better for beginners because if they make a major mistake with the exposure, they're better able to recover it. 
Raw files are also better if you're unsure about the exposure. If you don't know how to read the histogram, if you aren't continuously chimping and verifying that your exposure is okay and reshooting, shoot raw so that you can fix it later. Raw is also what I would always shoot for any sort of important shot. If you got up at 4 a.m. and went out to that perfect spot and the sun and the clouds and everything is perfect and you wanna make a wall size print, definitely totally shoot raw. I would also switch to raw anytime I knew there was a high dynamic range, like those pictures that I showed you where the sun was behind the couple. Those raw files are gonna turn out much better. Some tips if you do decide to shoot JPEG, because I know a lot of you are raw shooters, check your exposure regularly. Know how to use the histogram and make sure in particular you're not clipping the highlights. Also, bracket when you're in contrasty situations. Again, visit sdp.io slash tutorials to find the tutorial for your camera. Um, some tips for shooting raw, buy bigger and faster memory cards because you're gonna be pushing a lot more data in there, which means you'll be you'll benefit from having those more expensive cards. If you have a, a camera that shoots to two cards simultaneously and you want that backup, often one of those cards is gonna be faster. Like the DA10 has one CF card and one SD card. The CF card is bigger and faster. In those cases, shoot raw to the faster card and JPEG to the slower card. Also, if the camera gives you the option for losslessly compressed raw, that's a good thing. Nikon and Sony will generally do this and it can reduce the file size, thereby making RAW a little bit easier to live with. I've been editing these images in Adobe Lightroom. If you're not familiar with it, well, I have a book on it. Check out Tony Northrup's Lightroom book. Uh, also, if you wanna get the software, you can get it um, for like 10 bucks a month at sdp.io slash Adobe deal. And that includes the amazing Photoshop. Finally, we have all these books that you can get at our store or on Amazon. Go to Amazon, search for Tony Northrup and just check out the reviews. If you have any questions, any other tips you wanna provide, any feedback, different situations where one works better than the other or your own personal experiences, write a comment down below. Hit subscribe and hit that notification bell so you hear when we make new videos and give me a like. Thanks.